So the New Mexico governor was on MSNBC's Morning Joe, where she said this. Should an AR-15 be in his hands? Shouldn't. Uh, this is my point exactly. Uh, no, frankly, no one that isn't in the military, this is a weapon of war, or uh, the uh, trained police department. In my view, no one in America who isn't in the, one of those two ish situations should own an automatic weapon. There is no reason to own one of those. I'm, I'm sorry, but... What? It's 2023 and you're still calling AR-15s automatic weapons? You're either saying this because you're doubling down on stupid or because you're a liar. Either reason should preclude you from holding any type of office, but even more so, you should be the last person talking about anything having to do with firearm legislation when you don't even know the difference between the most popular civilian rifle in the country and a type of gun that has been banned since the 80s. Not only that, you call the AR-15 a weapon of war, but in the same breath said, the only people who should have AR-15s are the military and police, ma'am. Why would the police need AR-15s if they are weapons of war? Oh, now I get it. You want the police to have these so-called weapons of war because the state police are responsible for protecting the governor of the state of New Mexico. I keep calling politicians like the New Mexico governor anti-gun, but it's not true. You see, she's not against guns. She's against you and I having guns. These people love guns, especially when the guns are being used to protect them and being used to control you and I. She said it herself, only the military and the police should have AR-15s, even though the military doesn't use AR-15s because they use automatic rifles and the AR-15 is semi-automatic, but I digress. But how convenient that the only people she wants having AR-15s are the enforcement arm of the state and federal government. It gets even goofier when she starts naming off all of the gun laws the state of New Mexico already has, and this shooting still happened. So New Mexico has been very robust, and that's not to try to defend that we think we're there. We are clearly not. Until every mom, every dad, every student, every neighbor is safe, we keep doing it. But we've got extreme risk protection orders. We've got the domestic orders where guns have to be uh, uh, taken into custody pending the outcome of a domestic violence hearing or domestic violence dispute. We have universal background checks. We have straw purchase. Uh, I tried to raise the age uh, for purchasing firearms to 21. I'll do it again. We've asked for a mm -hmm. complete ban on assault weapons. We're putting $600 million out into behavioral health. We put $40 million out into additional school security and safety. Uh, and all of it, more needs to happen. There is a gun violence, a gun culture. Proving that the gun laws don't work. Red flag laws didn't stop this maniac from doing this. She mentions wanting to increase the age to buy a gun, but the current minimum age to purchase a handgun is 21, and the shooter was 18 and had two handguns. She ran down an entire list of all the gun laws that clearly didn't work and is still wanting to pass more. This is why I say there is no such thing as reasonable gun laws. When the people calling the gun laws reasonable think any and every gun law is reasonable as long as it gets them closer to their ultimate goal of banning guns. The reason they don't want you and I owning AR-15s even though they're used in less than 1% of mass shootings in this country is because they know the AR-15 is the most effective tool in the hands of civilians. And when you think only the government should have them, that tells you everything you need to know about what state they want you in. They want you docile, weak, and dependent. This is why the Second Amendment was written in the first place. The Founding Fathers understood that the government will always at some point seek to subjugate the people. The only way for the people to guard against a government's tyrannical aspirations was for the people to be armed with the most effective tool of the era. This is why the Second Amendment said arms and not a specific type of gun. And yes, AR-15s are protected by the Second Amendment a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It didn't say only handguns, it said arms. Guns aren't political. That's why I need your help getting this message to spread on YouTube by clicking the thumbs up button, leaving a comment to let me know what you think of the video, then subscribing to the channel. But most importantly, click that bell symbol. For products featured in this video, click the links in the description.